Good morning, church family. You may be seated. I'm so glad to see you all, and I welcome all of those that are listening to us um, on our streaming uh, process, I guess, and the Vacation Bible School kids. Some of those are here today. If we have any visitors, we'd like you to fill out the card in the back of the pew, put that in the offering plate, and if you need restrooms, they are in the building behind you. The ushers will make sure you get there. <laughs> this is one of the little things we made at Vacation Bible School today. Bevan made it for me and it smells so good. We had a lot of fun at Vacation Bible School this week. We had a marketplace, so we had a weaver, a spice shop, a bakery, a pottery, jewelry making, music, and basket weaving. So we had lots and lots of fun. The kids had a good time. We had, uh, for the first time, we had a synagogue school. Forrest played the uh, teacher. All the kids wore little yarmulkes. It was lots and lots of fun. I'd also like to welcome Verena Abufo. Fad, <laughs> who is our pianist today. She is here. She is here because Lady is in the Philippines visiting her family. So we all hope that she has Lady has a wonderful time and a safe trip and that she gets back soon. She'll be gone a month, so we will have some visiting pianists at that time. Um, I also want to make a big thank you to Regina Brazel and all of those that helped with Vacation Bible School. You know, our oldest member was, how old are you, Martha? 85. Martha was there every day. So we went by eight, from 85 to 2. So we had a large range, and we're so glad that all the volunteers, that Regina got us all uh, on the right line, and, and we had a wonderful time. <laughs> I also want to tell you that there will be upper rooms available in the narthex after the service. The upper room is a little daily devotional that uh, comes from the upper room. Um, we'll also remind you that there'll be a blood drive on July 10th between 10 and 2. So we'd like you to get signed up for the blood drive. You know how important that is, especially in the summer when people have accidents while hiking, camping, those kind of things. All right, I think I have all of the business done. Will you please stand and join me in the call to worship? This came from our Vacation Bible School, and every time the children said, trust Jesus, they had their hands in the air, trust Jesus. So if you would like to do that with us, we would appreciate it. Jesus is king. Trust Jesus. Jesus showed God's love. Trust Jesus. Jesus loves us. Trust Jesus. Jesus died for us. Trust Jesus. Jesus lives. Trust Jesus. Amen. We'll be singing hymn number 370, Victory in Jesus. Yes. 
precious blood atoning that I repented of my sin won the victory oh victory in Jesus my Savior forever he taught me Remain seated while standing, I'm sorry, while we do the prayer of the day. It was the VBS uh, theme song this week. Jesus came and lived among us. Now we can live for him. Jesus came and walked among us. Now we can walk with him. When he gave his life the greatest sacrifice, Jesus, Jesus, Precious Jesus, he died and rose again. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, he came his life for you and me. Amen. I'd like the kids to come up. Miss Jane has a message for you. Sit over here on this side. <laughs> yeah, there's oh, cushions over here. Yeah.
That's quite right for you, John. Hey. 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 Can't catch your tongue this morning. Okay. All right, who had fun in Bible school this week? <laughs> we had a great time in Bible school. Yeah, I did. We did all kinds of fun stuff doing though. Tired, so. Tired. Yes, I wish y'all could have seen them sing that song every day because that was the best. It was. Every day. And more than one time some days, right? Um, um, I don't know how much I'm supposed to reveal and if I'm going to get on Miss Majin's sermon material, but um, on Monday we said, Jesus Christ is Lord. That was our Bible verse from Philippians. Then Tuesday, you should love each other. That was in John. On Wednesday, I really like this one. Nothing will ever be able to separate us from the love of God. Amen. Yes. That was uh, Romans. On Thursday, God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us. How did he die, y'all? How did Christ die? Remember? What did they do to him? They sacrificed him. They sacrificed him. And where did they put him? Amen. Up on the... Cross. Yes, they put him up on the cross. I sure did. And Friday said, since I live, you also shall live. And today has the greatest commandment of all. It says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength. All your might. Yeah, we did that in um, Bible school. Yes, we did. This is all what we're talking about. It's what we did in Bible school this week. Uh, we had tribe time every day. That's where all the tribes got together. We were in three different tribes. And all the tribes got together and explored Bible times and customs. They also compared Bible times to our times, right? Like we talked about what different, what it was different from their school and our school when y'all went to Mr. Forrest's synagogue school. Yep. Uh, we also watched a Bible drama every day. Regina and uh, Thomas and some other people did great jobs on those. Did wonderful jobs on those. And Henry, that's right. Uh, you guys learned every day at the synagogue school with Mr. Forrest. You visited the Jerusalem marketplace tents. You want to tell guys what we did at the tents? We um we um did different stuff. Can you tell them some of the stuff we did? We made jewelry. Yep. And we made spices. Yeah, Bevan, which which ones did you go to? I went to spices and bread. Spices and bread, Thomas? Which one did you go to? Spices and bread. Spices and bread. Those were the two favorite. But there were, like um, Miss Diane said, there was lots of other ones cool to finish too. But I'm going to tell y'all, y'all made an old man very happy this week. Bruce got to work the spices tent. And he has never had such a good time, I don't think. I appreciate y'all for letting him do that. Then we played in the village playground. No, we, some, we Sometimes we got to go inside, didn't we? Yeah, not always. We never, sometimes we, didn't never, we never got to go to there. We didn't, we didn't go to the playground, but wherever we were was our playground, right? Mm -hmm. And do you remember some of the things we did? What did we do? We, we played with frisbees. Frisbees and? Noodles. Pool noodles. That's right. Those were our, our, those were our Olympic athlete, athletic events. <laughs> what else did we do, Forrest? I mean, Henry? Forrest. <laughs> At Forrest on my mind. What else did we do? What were the games that we played inside when we were able to play inside? Dreidel. Dreidel, the Jewish game. Yep. That was cool. That was something we learned, something new. What was that other game that we played? Remember? It was a little bit hard, so we started out with tic-tac-toe. Some of us got up to the big one. It was mill game. It was a version. And a lot of these games, they were all of the, uh, of the times. And uh, those uh, games were actually carved onto stones and they, where kids played them. And they also played dreidel to keep the... Uh, Cards from going into the caves where the adults were studying the Word of God. 
and we had a delicious supper every evening. Thank you so much to Mr. Bill Rose for that. Forrest, Vi, Joe, everybody else that provided anything. It was delicious and it kept us going. Our special thanks should go to Regina and Pastor Meejan, all our marketplace vendors, our teenage volunteers. We don't have any of them here today, but they did good. Oh, there they are. All right, good. They did a great job. And all the other behind the scenes RUMC and Bethel UMC members who filled in any place that we needed them. Our Vacation Bible Ministry Project was to do what? Put food where? Where were we putting our food? In the baskets. In the baskets. And where in was people's food? Belly. Uh, it's going to go in people's bellies because it's going into the what? Basket. The food pantry? Yeah. Yes, all our money was to go to the food basket. Um, the Judah tribe brought 86 pounds. The Nathalpa? The deer. The yeah, the that was, Whatever, that one brought 62 pounds. And the Simeon tribe brought in 56 pounds for a total of 204 pounds of food. Wow. Yay. Good job. It was a great week full of fun, food, and learning about God and Jesus, and I can't wait till next year. I can't wait either. All right, good. That means I'll see you back here next year. Yay. All right. You go first, Andy. <laughs> Can you get up? Yeah. Crab walk. We're done. For those of you that don't know, Miller and Thomas are Bobby, or Tommy Jones twins. Yeah. And Tiffany made sure they were here all week. Am I doing the prayer or are you doing Okay. <clears throat> Please stand for the prayer of illumination. You'll find that in your bulletins. Please join me. O oh God, by your spirit, plant your word within us that we may follow your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and never leave him. May we find our home in your kingdom and our life in your spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Please remain standing while I read from Deuteronomy 6, 1 through 9. Part of this, the children also learned, they, the Jewish people would put on their doorposts. So um, remember, now this is the commandment, the statutes and the ordinances that the Lord your God charged me to teach you, to observe in the land that you are about to cross into and occupy, so that you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life <clears throat> and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you so that your days may be long. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently, so that it may go well with you, and so that you may multiply greatly in the land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is your God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand Fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Well, 
Well, the sermon is called Our Week in the Marketplace, and you've heard about it twice now, so I'm going to go through this part very rapidly. First and foremost, we have to give a huge thank you to Regina and her hard work, because without her, we would not have had VBS. Amen. On Monday... On Monday, we had 11 children, Tuesday 20, Wednesday 15, Thursday 15, Friday 17, and it was a grand total of 78 children for the week. And the theme was we stepped back in time to where Jesus lived, and we wore these beautiful costumes from the drive through drama, and we all learned and agreed um, never again in the summer. Unless you're going to be inside and air conditioning all day long. So the schedule was when the kids arrived, they got dinner. And as we said, we got to give a huge thank you to Bill Rose. He cooked the meal mostly by himself. I feel weird saying this, but please hold your applause until the end or we're going to be here a very long time. We also want to thank all of the kitchen crew, everyone who helped Bill cook, who helped set up, pass out the food, cleared off the tables, take out the trash, and a special thank you to everyone who helped wash dishes. After dinner, the children would come in here and we'd have the welcome celebration where we would sing some songs. Uh, the one, the theme song that is our call to worship, we sang that the most. I think it was one of the kids Favorites? Was it one of your favorites, guys? Yeah. Yes. And they called it the circle song because in the video, everybody was in a circle. And so the kids would get in a circle and sing the song. We want to thank Bobby and Thomas for helping with the sound and the microphones. Thank you to Jonathan for handling our tech, making sure the projector worked, the computer worked, the videos, all of that. We also want to thank Jim for taking photos the first night. So after we sang some songs and did a check-in, we would have our Bible drama, to which all the children agreed they preferred to have the story acted out instead of told or read to them. And I don't blame them. So thank you for all of our actors. We learned our Bible point of the day, which were those things in the call to worship. We talk about what was going on in their lives, what they were learning. They learned about how Jesus came in on a donkey. They learned how Jesus showed love by washing his disciples' feet and many other things. Then we had tribe time, as we discussed. And I have to thank, we had three tribes. So thank you, Tiffany, Holly and Tommy, and Jessica for leading our tribes. Then they had synagogue school. Yes, Miller. Not here today. I know, but we still thank him even though he's not here today. <laughs> and then the activities kind of changed. But as we said, we had synagogue school. Thank you, Forrest, wherever you are for synagogue school. The kids learned how to write their name in Hebrew. They learned what a yarmulke is. They sampled a Passover meal and what all the foods resemble and agreed the bread wasn't the best, <laughs> but the apples and cinnamon and sugar were the best. And they wrote in clay. Not a lot of the kids, but all of the adults agreed, we are so glad we don't have to write in clay. As I said, it might take me a month just yeah. to write my sermon. Then we had games. Thank you to Jane and all your helpers. Uh, on Friday, Regina and Jane attempted to teach the children the Hora, which did not happen. Um, we tried. They tried. It turned into a massive dance party with some of our kids doing ballet and whatever they wanted. And it was perfectly fine. For the marketplace booths, we had basket making, and we thank Debbie from Bethel and all the young adults that helped her. Joe Daniels did musical instruments. The kids could play instruments, and they also made hearts out of popsicle sticks, and they are very proud of their hearts. We're thankful for Dave and Janice for jewelry making. As they said, it was one of the kids' favorites. Some of the children are wearing the jewelry they made. They made necklaces, they made rings and bracelets. 
They made jewelry for themselves, they made it for their family members and friends, and they even made some for all of you. Uh, at the end of the service, we have gifts that the children have made for all of you. Betty Moore did pottery. Um, on the first day, they made some things out of the clay and realized the clay didn't necessarily work the best, and it was easier just to paint pottery, like a bank. And then there was the favorite station, the bakery. Thank you, Judy and your assistant, Felicia. The kids loved the bakery. Um, they would discuss and maybe debate a little bit about who got to make the bread. They loved making the bread. I'm sorry to burst the bubble and reveal the secret. The bread the kids made is not what we ate, but we did eat really, really good bread. And it was so good that one girl took some home in the keepsake box that she made for her parents to try. And we all hoped that it made it out of the box. <laughs> Spices was the other big favorite thing. Thank you to Briggs. He's also not here today and all of his helpers. The kids had an array of things they could choose from and then pick out a color cloth. And as was fun, they got to smash all the stuff. And they'd come up to you and go, smell, smell what I made. And you <laughs> crossed your fingers and said a prayer that, oh gosh, God, let this be good. And the majority of the time it smelled fantastic and I was always surprised. On day one, we had a weaving station. Thank you, Diane, for that. But we learned the kids did not enjoy it, especially the little kids. If they made it halfway through the material, it was a miracle. So the weaving station closed. Thank you, Jonathan, for handling carpentry. On the first night and some others, they made dreidels. And on the first night, we had a little boy who was so excited about the dreidel that he made. He didn't know what it represented or anything, but he was so excited that he would tell everybody and show everybody, look at this dreidel, look at this dreidel. They made keepsake boxes and they colored keychains and carpentry turned out was for the boys, especially the younger ones, their favorite because they got to use a hammer. <laughs> then after all of that, they would have tribe time again where they got to eat the bread, which was a top favorite, and review the day. And then they would come back in here and we'd discuss what they learned that day. We discussed our mission project of bringing food to the food pantry. As you heard, the kids brought a lot of food. We sang more songs. More often than not, we sang the circle song. <laughs> and then we always ended with the farewell song called Shalom. And it's our benediction later on. And again, in the video, everybody's gathered in a circle. So it was circle song number two. <laughs> and as you did the song, the object was just like kind of the hokey pokey, just kick your feet in very gently. But as the song got faster, the circle kept collapsing, and it was who can kick the other one, and whose shoes can come off the fastest. Overall, we had a wonderful, wonderful week. So why take all this time to tell you what we did? Well. One, I wanted you to get a feeling of what our children experienced throughout the week. As you can tell, they were all super excited. But also, I got to watch our children and our adults live out this verse and, uh, about loving the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And I also got to watch our adults recite the scriptures to your children and talk about them when you're at home and when you're here. And let's be honest, sometimes loving children takes all your might <laughs> as much as we love them and they were all wonderful. Some of the children I heard a lot was, wouldn't it be great if they, the children came here every Sunday? And it would be. But many of the children already went to churches. Some come here, 
Some don't go anywhere. And if nothing else, the children learn this week that Jesus loves them. And we were able to open the door this week for people's children and grandchildren to spend a week learning about Jesus and growing in their faith. And some of you have shared with me your concern. You don't understand how your children were raised up in the church and now they don't go to church and your grandchildren don't go to church and you don't know what to do about it. Well, good news. It goes all the way back to Moses' time, so you are not alone. That is why we have this text this morning. They have been wandering around in the desert for 40 years, and Moses spoke to the Israelites about life in the promised land. Promised land. And sometimes we think, and I bet they did too, that the promised land was just going to be this beautiful, wonderful, perfect place. But it was not that way. They were about to be scattered throughout the land. They were going to be confronted by people with different customs and religions. And it was necessary for them to survive and thrive as people of God in a hostile environment. So how could they do that and teach their children how to thrive around, among very different people? And the same question faces us today. How will our children thrive with different people? How will they share the love of Jesus with others? Will our children and our grandchildren have faith? Will they go to church when it's their time to decide? I don't know. I can't predict the future. But I can say this. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 5 is referred to as the Shema. And it's a liturgical prayer prominent in Jewish history and tradition that is recited daily at the morning and evening services and expresses the Jewish people's strong faith in and the love of God. Imagine how our day would be if we started it every day, reminding ourselves to love God with all our heart and mind and strength, and that the Lord is our God. And also during BBS, the children got to experience a mezuzah. Um, the Bible verse of the day was written on a scroll, and ours was a wooden box. If you're not familiar with this, the mezuzah is something that is hung on the door frame as a reminder. And it is customary for religious Jews to touch it every time they pass through the door and kiss the fingers that touched it. As I said, ours was a wooden box, and it was passed around the tribe, and the children would take their fingers, kiss their fingers, and touch the box. On a side note, I think it worked very well except in Jessica's group, because she had the four-year-old girl and the two-year-old boy, and we had to keep an eye on them because they heard kiss the box and they wanted to kiss the box. It got better as the week went on, but we still had to make sure they just blew the box a kiss. We taught our children this week that even though you love the God with everything you have, that sometimes we're sad. And it's okay to be sad. On Thursday night when we learned that Jesus died for us, it was not a happy story. Compared to night one when we learned that Jesus came riding in on a donkey. And so we taught our children that when you're sad, take your hand and place it over your heart as a reminder that Jesus loves you. And it's okay to be sad. And if your friend is ever sad, show them how to do it. So they know it as well. And as we know, loving God with all our heart and all our soul and all our might is something I bet everyone here can say from memory. But how often do we actually live it out? How actually can we just 
explore it. It sounds, again, so easy to do, but at times it is so, so difficult. And it was so wonderful this week to watch it being lived out, to watch all the children who came through the door, no matter what color they were, to be loved on by their group and their tribe leaders and the volunteers. Didn't matter if you only came for a couple days or the whole week or maybe even one day. And near the end of the week, we had a little girl who joined Jessica's tribe. Her uncle was also in Jessica's tribe. Don't ask, because they're about the same age and it'll just confuse you, so don't ask. <laughs> And it was beautiful to watch her uncle and Bevan take this little girl under their wings and show her how to do the dances and show her what the different things were, how to make the bread and how to make the spices, <coughs> along with other people in their group. So without even realizing it, our children we're showing God's love by being compassionate and welcoming all of those in. I do miss the kids. It was great. And with every BBS, no, things did not go perfect or as planned. We learned some very valuable lessons, as we always do. We learned that our, our nursery is not as well stocked as we thought it was, because without fail, Little children will have accidents during VBS, and they don't always have a change of clothes. And we learned we didn't have gloves or wipes and pull-ups and extra clothes that we didn't care if we got back. But that didn't matter. The hardest part was trying to keep the little kids from just running out the bathroom so they could go play again, and we're like, nope. But I learned some lessons too. I learned that you never go to the chiropractor right before BBS. <laughs> um, it makes it very hard to stand up. I was sitting right there on that cushion and was sitting with Jessica's group and realized, oh, she's got plenty of help tonight. I don't need to help her. And was like, I can't get up. <laughs> there were some other moments too. And People offered to help me up, but I am 30 and I am stubborn, and I said no. It also didn't help that that was the night all of the young children ran in for welcome time and all wanted to be picked up and given a hug. But I was also reminded that the plans I always make for VBS never worked out. I had a plan every night, I'd do the welcome, maybe walk around a little bit, and then go and work in my office. That never happened. One night I became the buddy for a four-year-old girl, um, just because she was probably sitting in my lap and she grabbed my hand and I was gonna go somewhere else and we became buddies. I was reminded that, of course, I would not sit in my office because I wanted to interact with all of the children. And I did primarily interact with the younger group because when you have a lot of small children, you need all the help you can get because it's like herding cats at times. I learned that sometimes the best thing to do is drop some beads on the floor and let a two-year-old pick them up because that's all he wanted to do. My favorite moments were the hospitality that was shown, how much the kids loved it and felt welcomed and were excited. Watching the children sing and dance every night, kind of mumbling through some words until they got to the part they know, praising Jesus with all of their might. The kids' excitement. I know of at least one kid who was only going to come for a couple days, and he changed his plans so he could come for the whole week. You know, I also got to enjoy holding a four-year-old and a two-year-old again, because sometimes the two-year-old just needed to be taken and explore something else, because his attention span had reached its limits. 
I'm very proud of our church for this week. I'm very proud of what you did for VBS. I thank you for your prayers and all that you did. I'm thankful that we told the children about Jesus. I'm thankful that we told them to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. We did have a song about that verse, but they didn't like it because it was too slow. <laughs> As you go forth this week, I want you to remember that. And I want you to know that during VBS, we planted some seeds. We planted seeds of how much God loves you and our children. And we reminded our adults that. And it was fun to watch the teenagers and the adults, how their seeds that were already there grow stronger and grow a little bit taller. That's what it's about. It's about planting seeds. It's about loving your neighbor as yourself. It's about necessarily not caring what the attendance is. Coming from a church where VBS was like 100 kids to one where it was 15 a night, I loved it. <laughs> so nice. But to see the joy on their faces and their excitement of learning new things, their excitement of, oh, I remember, probably just so they could talk in the microphone. <laughs> I wish you all could have been a part of it. And I thank you for all that you did. And so I, I encourage you this week to continue to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Pick a verse, maybe this one, maybe another one. I'm going to challenge us all to recite it once in the morning and once at night as a reminder of how much God does love us. As a reminder of sometimes it's hard, but God is always there. Because as the children learned this week, and kids, you're gonna have, I'm going to start it, and you're going to help me out, okay? Because nothing can separate us from God's love. That's right. So trust Jesus. Trust Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able, as we respond to God's word, by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Before we get into our time of prayer, there are a couple of prayer requests I would like to share. First off, it's a praise, as you saw, Bill's cast is off. But the prayer is for him and Judy because he can't golf for six weeks. <laughs> so we want to pray that it gets healed really quickly. On a more serious note, I would ask you to continue to pray for my dad, Stan. He's kind of regressed and made progress and regressed all at the same time. Um, so I ask that you would continue to pray for him as he goes through healing from COVID still, and everyone who has COVID and is continuing to heal from it. Let us go to God in prayer. Creator God, we thank you for all of the blessings of this life. We thank you for families and friends 
colleagues, neighbors, and strangers who nurture us, that the love of God may grow within us. We pray that your love and your word will be like a seed, that it may grow to produce in us good fruit. Holy God, may your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. Merciful God, this morning we, gave, we give praise for VBS. We give praise for all the children who came and all of the volunteers and all of the hard work. We also lift up in prayer Felicia, Earl, Virgie, Gail, Dee, Dial, Tommy, Tiffany, Cool, Janice, Jan, L.W., Felicia, the Martinez family, Benny, Matt, Elaine, Diane, Violetta, Ray, Stan, Melissa. God, we offer up a special prayer request this morning. Our country is always divided, but God, it is even more divided right now after the Supreme Court decision this week. We all have feelings about it. Some of us are trying to process it. And God, I just ask that you would be with all of us and be with our country as we process and go forth with this decision. God, we pray for the leaders of all the nations and cities. We ask that they may lead with strong hearts and gentle hands, that they may lead with generous spirits and with compassion, mercy, wisdom, and grace. May they reflect your will, guiding all of their actions and decisions. May your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. We pray for those who serve in harm's way, for those who live in dangerous places, those who live in areas of war and strife and those who live in fear. We pray for those who worry about their employment, bills, and food. We pray for those who are struggling just to find a little bit of dignity in life. May your grace bring peace and safety to all people. May your love be like a seed taking root and growing strong. God, you are the ultimate healer, and this morning we pray for anyone who is suffering from any illness or disease, no matter if it be a disease of the mind or the body or the spirit. Restore these people. Restore all of those that we carry in our hearts to the fullness of health. The health as only you, O oh God, can bring us. May your mercy shower each of us with healing mercy and love. May your love be like a seed taking root and growing strong. God, we pray for those who are dying and for those who have died. Send forth your comforting love and give solace to those who mourn. May your grace surround all of us like a mantle upon our heads, a shawl upon our shoulders, and a hand to hold our hand. May your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. We offer up this prayer this morning, the prayer request read out loud, and the prayer request we have in our hearts. We lift them up to you, O God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to say as we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Just a reminder, our sermon series based on Adam Hamilton's book, The Lord's Prayer, will begin next Sunday, July 3rd. It will be what we use in pastor's Bible study starting July 6th. 
The book is available to purchase on Amazon and other places online. If you would like the church to order you a copy of the book, the book is $15, and those orders need to be placed into the office by this Tuesday, July, June 28th, so we can get the books in on time. This week has been a blessing. And I hope it has been a blessing for all of you as well. And we have so much to be thankful for. And so now let us give back to God to show our thanks, our gratitude, and our love for all that he has done for us. what we have given today and let it be used and multiply in order to spread the message of your love with others throughout our community. Amen. Amen.
Our final hymn is one of my favorites, Here I Am, Lord. And I invite you, as you would like, to come forward and pray. As I said last week, the rails are a little more crowded, but they're still open. If you want to give God praise, if you just want to talk about something, whatever it may be, know that they are open for you to come. So let us sing our final hymn, 593, Here I Am, Lord.
Where is the Lord sending you? Our benediction today is our VBS farewell song. Because our time in the marketplace has ended. And our time of worship has ended for today. So I'm going to ask if Bevan and Thomas and Miller and Henry. I'm right here. You, Henry's right there. I want you guys, you're in the back, so say it loudly. Can you tell everybody here what shalom means? Hi and bye. Peace. Yes, peace. And Havarim says friends. So we are saying peace, friends, until we meet again. Let us all say our benediction together. Shalom, Havarim. Shalom, Havarim. Shalom, shalom. Till we meet again. Till we meet again. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, friends. Go in peace.